Welcome back everybody and welcome to another episode of, wait for it, Glide Shorts. That's right. All right, here we are at another um, mom and pop. I'm guessing this is probably a silver mine. I don't think this was a gold mine by the looks of the geology. I could be wrong. They might have been finding trace amounts of gold. But the reason I want to show you guys this one today is because sometimes these places that I find out here in the middle of nowhere kind of have a creepy vibe to them. Um, this one kind of gave me that feeling. But uh, when you walk around and look at the various uh, artifacts and objects, it kind of starts to tell a story. You can pick up on the clues and uh, start to formulate uh, just exactly what's going on here. So uh, let me show you what I found. All right, so the first thing that I saw when I pulled up here is this uh, cable stretched out on the ground. So that tells me that there's got to be an incline shaft or a vertical in the area, an old one, even though uh, there's no head frame or anything like that. Then as I continued on, we've got a couple old tires over there. Now understand, I, we're probably, old Bob and I are probably maybe 40 miles, 30, 40 miles from civilization. Then I saw this, this child scooter right here, battery powered scooter from looks like it's the 80s and then down here is uh you know those uh micro sized mini bikes that you know they it's kind of like a miniature version of a crotch rocket well here's two of them that's the that's the back tire right there and you can see the muffler sticking up right there and that's the back tire of another one right there with again the crankcase and you can see the engine on the front of it so there was two of those mini mini bikes here i'm guessing this is probably these two down here are the the two front tires i thought that was kind of interesting another thing that was kind of weird is you know why do you drag something like this all the way out into the desert oh by the way looking down on the ground there's the uh, handlebars to these two mini bikes. So why would you drag a coin operated whatever it is? Okay, you see right down there, you put the coins in. All right, and then the thing flips up. Okay, I don't know what was in there, but you know, your guess is as good as mine as to why you would drag such a thing all the way out into the desert. Over here, now this these looks like possibly some old tent poles, okay. So I'm, I'm showing you all this right now because I'm I'm building you up to a, to a conclusion. So just you know stick with me. Here is uh, oh I forget the name of that thing. You attach it to a bicycle. See, right there. Um, it's just for you know running your kids around behind your bike. It's what it's for. There's a name for it. Okay, now, over here. When I saw that bicycle laying on its side out here, that's what kind of creeped me out just a little bit. That's a Huffy. It's the Huffy Rock 2. Yeah. From the 80s. And then finally, um, before we go into the makeshift cabin, I want to show you where the mine was. And indeed, it was an incline shaft. It's bat barred off down there. Ain't no more getting into that one. Uh, but turning around here, let me show you what I found. You'll see what's etched in the concrete right there. July 29th, 1983. Okay, so what we have here is a 1920s or a 1930s mine. And then fast forward, and you can tell that it was from that period because look at the rock wall that surrounds 
um, this building, or it was built afterwards here. Do you see the thickness of it? It's about two, two and a half feet thick. Let me show you this over here. You're looking good today, old Bob. I just wanted to tell you that, yeah. Okay. See the thickness? That's about three feet on that side. See that? So why did they build something so thick? Well, you know, in those days, in the 20s and 30s, uh, to construct something like that would definitely keep the wind out. Um, and then what you do is you just build above that, put your roof on. Now all that material is gone. Now fast forward to the early 80s, these folks came along and built this plywood, makeshift plywood structure within the perimeter of the old 1930s um, cabin slash homestead slash whatever this used to be. Okay, now here we are inside. You see that? It's all two by four construction. Built in the 80s, plywood slapped onto the outside bed over here. Here's a jar of, uh, I'm guessing that's probably salt. Okay, now I'm going to show you some, well, let's just keep going here. Of course, we had a wood burner there. And then off this direction, folks were out here doing some target practice. And we got this little desk over here. This is probably from the 80s with a uh, uh, 1970s pencil sharpener. Yeah, look at that. Remember those back in the grade school, guys? And if you're my age, you do. Okay, turning around here. Now, fast forward a little bit, and you get to about 2018. Somebody was up here doing something because I pulled this back earlier, and all the cans and bottles and various things on this shelf down here are from, they all have expiration dates of uh, 2017, 2018, kind of in that area. But let's get back to the, to the 80s folks. All right, let's, uh, uh, let's see, where can I, let's go over here. There we go. Just like that. So what occurred during the early 80s to get these uh, folks excited enough to drive all the way out here into the desert, put together a makeshift structure. You can tell that they had their family out here. They were doing cookouts, um, you know, keeping the kids happy, keeping people entertained while probably uh, whoever was running the mine was doing their thing while the kids ran around, did their thing. Um, but uh, in the early 80s, gold and silver prices took a spike. They just shot straight up and uh, they are, were, were at a high price, higher than they had been for a very long time. And there was an absolute flurry of activity all through that, that uh, date range. And everybody just hit the hills looking for abandoned mines, reclaiming up old mines, um, and on and on and on. And go, you, it goes. Now, many of you guys have asked me, you know, you see a lot of those spray paint markings in uh, abandoned mines. Well, a lot of that came from that time period. Um, they either did it themselves, went in there and took samples and assayed and uh, uh, tested all of those old abandoned mines and left spray paint markings behind, or, the, or a geologist was hired out, and uh, then they did all the work. But that's why you see all those markings in, inside of mines. So uh, in the future, just like in the past, when you see me go into a mine and you see all that spray paint, chances are it comes from that time period. So this is quite interesting. Um, yeah, I, I like to come into these, lo these locations and look for the clues. It tells a story. And this one kind of has a, a story similar to my own, you know, um, in the 90s when, when we ran our gold mine. 
it was kind of a small, it was a small operation, but we uh, didn't want to throw a whole lot of money at it. So we did things similar to this. We kept it cheap. The goal was, was to get the gold out of the ground and not put a whole lot of money into the uh, overhead and everything else. Uh, but uh, we made do. We made a profit and it was a lot of fun and it made a lot of good family memories. And I'm sure that this one did for the folks that uh, uh, ran around here looking to seek their fortune also. All right, let me show you a few more things around here and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So at night, they were out here by the campfire and uh, see so you got their, their cooking grates were still laying on the ground right there. You can throw that over the top and cook you up a steak. And the kids used to do what I love to do. Again, another clue. What was the funnest thing to do when you were a youngin around a campfire? Melt plastic milk jugs. Heck yeah. So that's what we have right there. So they were melting jugs and dripping the, dripping the plastic on the rocks. That was so much fun. Remember doing that guys? Cause, uh, it was so much fun because it made a, 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 a like a like a Star Wars noise as the plastic dripped and hit the ground. Until one day, I got some on a stick, and I f got I don't know what happened. Anyways, I flipped it up in the air, and a piece of plastic came down and landed right below my right eye. Still have the scar from that to this very day. And another look at the. Uh, Another look at the rock wall from that perspective. Okay, one more thing I wanna show you. I'll be right back. Yeah, it's a darn good thing that that plastic didn't uh, drip into my eye. I would've lost my eye when I was about eight or nine years old. Down there in the bottom, there's a blue barrel. I walked down there earlier, kicked it, checked it, make sure there wasn't anything inside, if you know what I mean. And there's another one down over there um, I did that one as well. I checked it out. Okay, looking off this direction. Now you can see the old waste rock pile. And uh, off to the left, that's the original road into this location. See the stacked rock on the edge of the road? So, yeah, all these various clues. I found this one pretty interesting. Let's go back over here. Um, yeah, we'll go over here. There we go. And that's what's half the fun about running out, running around out here in the uh, middle of nowhere. You find places like this and to entertain yourself, <laughs> entertain myself, I look for the clues. I try to formulate a story of uh, what's, what's going on, and then I move on to the next location. Guys, thank you so much for coming along on another episode of uh, Gly's Shorts, and uh, I'll see what else I can find for you guys next Wednesday. But until then, I will see y'all this coming Saturday. Okay, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.